I am Jeff Ely. I am the secretary of the North American Regional Standing Committee of the Econometric Society. Uh, the North American Regional Standing Committee has a couple of jobs, um, mainly organizing the North American meetings, the summer meetings in particular, uh, which happen once a year. Um, and I would like to, in that capacity, uh, thank um, the program chair, Marzena Rostek, and the local organizers, uh, Dora Costa, uh, Simon Board, and Andres Santos for organizing what appears to be a fantastic conference. As uh, secretary, um, I have the privilege of serving on the committee that selects the Walras Boli lecturer. Um, our lecturer this year is Fuhito Kojima. Uh, Fuhito is a fellow of the Econometric Society and the member of many um, editorial boards. He's a world-class researcher with um, specifically influential contributions in the area of market design, uh, ranging from uh, the theoretical foundations of matching um, all the way to very practical um, institutional design. Um, uh, the Walras Bowley Lecture is an annual lecture um, held at the North American Summer Meetings. And um, uh, it's meant to invite a distinguished speech speaker, uh, non-North American based, and a quick perusal of the um, previous speakers uh, confirms that uh, they are certainly of uh, high distinction, and Fujito, Fujito will certainly add to that aura. Um, uh, incidentally, the European uh, meetings of the Econometric Society have an annual lecture, the Fisher Schultz Lecture, which selects a non-European speaker uh, to give that lecture. In practice, this has meant that in the North American meetings we have typically a European speaker, and in the European me meetings we typically have a North American-based speaker. Uh, but I'm happy to say that um, for the first time, as far as I can tell in either of these lectures, we have an East Asian-based uh, speaker. Um, so let me, let me, with that, hand it over to Fujito. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, uh, Jeff. Um, that's so uh, kind and generous introduction. I'm really flattered. And thank you, uh, 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 um, uh, special thanks to the organizing committee. And uh, of course, thank you uh, for everybody for uh, well, uh, coming to this talk. Well, uh, apparently I'm a bit uh, nervous now in front of everybody here. <laughs> OK, so uh, let me, uh, without um, uh, without showing my nervousness, let me just uh, get into the uh, talk, so, okay. Uh, so thanks again for coming. So today, I would like to talk uh, uh, about the issue of fragmentation in matching markets, okay, and what to do about it. Um, my talks, uh, talk will be mostly based on my joint works with uh, Yuichi Okamada uh, from Berkeley, and now having joint uh, uh, appointment in Tokyo, and also Akira Matsushita, who is a grad student uh, at Tokyo, okay. Um, as a sort of general interest talk like this one, so uh, I'm going to uh, uh, take some parts from uh, some of uh, uh, several projects uh, that I'm engaged in, and uh, mostly talking about uh, 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 issues in these two papers. Okay, so uh, let me begin. All right, so, uh, uh, so I'm a matching theorist and interested in the design of the matching market. Okay. And the, uh, the literature has been developed uh, in such a way that, well, uh, the theory has been in applied in many different, uh, okay, uh, different settings, uh, such as labor markets, uh, school choice, organ exchange, personnel uh, uh, assignment, uh, and uh, school choice, uh, da, 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 a lot of them. And uh, thankfully, uh, the, uh, there has been uh, more and more evidence that uh, 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 the nice design in the matching markets uh, uh, using uh, uh, using matching theory and specifically uh, using the centralized clearing house with algorithm help uh, has uh, improved the ma uh, market in, in several uh, ways. And uh, let me just mention two two papers. Uh, one uh, one uh, the uh, thesis by Voss saying that well one of the benefits from centralizing a matching market is to make the market thick, uh, meaning that well. 
put everybody in the same place, uh, well, uh, for real or in, in, in virtually, and uh, collect uh, private information, uh, typically a preference list uh, uh, of like uh, what is your favorite uh, uh, option and so on, and then um, uh, use that information and uh, optimize in a, a large scale. Okay, so that that could uh, potentially realize uh, large gains from trade. Okay, and uh, related, uh, there's a very nice paper by uh, uh, Attila and uh, Nikio and, uh, and others um, studying the uh, centralized matching market in the scooters context, uh, where. The, one of the benefits from having such a centralized matching mechanism is to coordinate assignments, meaning that once you collect a lot of people and, uh, well, uh, there may be a congestion or mismatch if you are just left without any help from algorithm, by using an algorithm, uh, you can sort of sort out who should be matched with whom. So these things seem to be, a, 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 to, to realize a, a possible gain from trade. Okay. So I'm very happy uh, to, have learned recently that these things seem to be really kind of tangible. Uh, so I have spent, I have been spending the se uh, last several years actually doing a little bit of the uh, implementation work myself. So for example, uh, I helped uh, uh, introduce matching mechanism uh, in the uh, um, employee and the division uh, matching within the organization, like, like companies, and uh, I, uh, I advise some uh, cities, oh, I'm sorry that you cannot read this, perhaps, but uh, I helped some cities in Japan uh, when they needed to uh, uh, allocate uh, vaccination slots during the pandemic. And um, so I also worked with some cities um, which has a daycare assignment. So the a, 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 um, city government needs to decide if, which uh, parents uh, who lives in the city uh, must get the, uh, should get the daycare slots, uh, okay, where, where they are uh, uh, over demand. Okay, so these are all great. So uh, um, it looks like, uh, uh, looks like uh, centralizing uh, uh, cleaning house seems to be helpful. However, at the same time, uh, I, uh, I'm increasingly become, uh, became aware that, well, there seems to be some limit in the benefit from having these uh, matching mechanisms. And one of the issues appears that, well, oftentimes these matching uh, mechanisms are organized at a pretty small local scale, okay? And uh, these markets are fragmented, okay? Just to give an example uh, uh, from this pandemic, uh, 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 pandemic. so uh, when I talked to uh, the city government uh, who was uh, in charge of allocating uh, uh, vaccination slots to, uh, 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 to, to, to people, it turns out that, that this, each of these cities uh, uh, are authorized only to vaccinate people who are living there, okay? And then it turns out that the, one of the cities had much more people uh, wanted to get vaccinated there, but there are not enough, uh, 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 enough supply of vac vaccines. And uh, in, in just in the next uh, 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 city next to it, there are a lot of oversupply of vaccination slots. And, but then they couldn't coordinate their allocation. Okay. And uh, this is not just one example. Well, um, so, uh, so uh, Jeff just mentioned that uh, there's a big uh, uh, named lecture uh, from the Europe. And, uh, Ross uh, gave a uh, named lecture, uh, uh, lecture uh, about a quarter century ago, and this table is from his paper. So in this paper, he made, uh, made a point that, well, there are a lot of matching, uh, matching markets using different kind of mechanisms and study how they perform. But uh, I would like to uh, make a totally different point out of his uh, well-known table, which is, well, the markets are quite fragmented in many places. Uh, for example, this is a list of regional medical match uh, uh, markets in the UK. Okay, uh, the, basically, uh, UK is divided up to about 20 regions, and each of these regional markets has its own matching mechanisms. All right, and similarly, uh, in the US, medical match. Um, in, when, the, when you finish the uh, first residency, you go on to the specialty, meaning that, well, a fellowship, uh, specializing in some, uh, some, sub, uh, uh, some, um, some part of the medicine, 
and uh, uh, our uh, table set uh, about 30 different uh, matching mechanisms. And uh, the, the thing is that if you, uh, if you are uh, aspiring a fellow, um, you know, or you can, uh, you, you could be considered for related fields such as post surgery and ankle surgery, but basically you are, uh, you, you, your uh, application can be coordinated between these two markets, right? Okay. The situation is not much different in other applications either. So for example, in the schools, typically the school choice is done in the city level or district level, even, even smaller sometimes. And also in the daycare allocation that I just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Well, uh, in the Japanese case, um, uh, which I'm uh, very familiar with, the, um, uh, the daycares uh, are organized at uh, a basic municipality level, the city government level. Okay. Actually, let me spend a little bit more time in the case study, uh, actually concentrating on the daycare allocation in Tokyo, Japan. Okay. Uh, like I already said, this um, daycare is a heavily regulated uh, uh, market, and uh, basically the daycare is pretty much free uh, for parents, and uh, hence uh, heavily over-demanded. Okay. And uh, this over-demand implies two things. One is that, well, government is uh, under a lot of pressure to do something about it. Secondly, well, uh, they, they need to uh, use some matching algorithm to allocate, to ration the limited seats in desired daycare seats. And indeed, uh, the, uh, uh, each city government uh, has its own matching mechanism. Sometimes the uh, uh, well-known standard gale shuttle algorithm, sometimes its variations uh, or the immediate uh, uh, acceptance mechanisms. Anyway, so the, the city government does the matching for them, right? Okay. And then, uh, like I said, um, the, this is all done by the basic city level, and there are about 1,800 of them in Japan. Okay. And the, this small size appears to be a problem in places like Tokyo. So this is a map of uh, central part of Tokyo, and there are 23 cities comprising central part of Tokyo. And as you can see, well, the next to it, so this is uh, the right-hand side is a picture of New York City, okay? The, uh, the average area of each of these 23 cities is about the half the size of the Manhattan Island, okay? Not even the New York City itself, okay? So that's relatively small, okay? And uh, this means that chances are that uh, your, the, uh, one of the closest daycares to your house could be across the city border, okay? Moreover, uh, in the big metropolitan area like Tokyo, well, uh, people actually move around a lot, okay? And uh, that means uh, if uh, if you work in the center of, uh, of Tokyo, or Tokyo, then uh, you might commute, okay? And uh, the mo one of the most convenient daycares for your kids could be close to your, uh, close to your office, not to your house, but then uh, that means that you cross the border, okay? But once again, like I said, because the city government is in charge of allocating daycare seats to its residents, and pr primarily only to the, uh, its residents, that means that you are out of luck, okay? And indeed, this seems to be a pretty big deal here. So for example, let me just show the, some numbers. Uh, take the example of Chiyoda City. Uh, this is a, 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 a basically a business district, and that happened to be a, one of the cities that I talked to with when doing the uh, COVID allocation thing, and uh, vaccination thing. And uh, the, uh, the daytime population is uh, something like 850,000. And that is about 15 times bigger than, well, uh, the nighttime population. So a lot of people move, uh, move in, okay? And the, the, another example is Bunkyo City, which, well, which is simply where I live. Um, that, that, that place also has this property that, well, the uh, daytime population is about uh, twice as big as the nighttime population. So people move around, okay? So uh, the pattern is similar in many places in Tokyo as well, okay? So this seems to uh, basically make this relatively small size uh, of, uh, of the organizing uh, matching market to be pretty problematic, right? Okay. Of course, I am not the first person to notice this at all. Indeed, 
there's a very common word uh, in Japan describing this uh, situation. So there's, uh, well, some of you might read uh, Chinese characters. So this is called the Ekkyo Nyuen. So Ekkyo Nyuen is a practice in which, well, uh, the uh, residents in city A uh, send their kids to uh, uh, daycare in city B, okay? So that is actually allowed in a limited, uh, 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 limited manner, okay, which, which I will describe soon, okay? So uh, Ekkyo simply, Ekkyo means across the border and the new end means, well, daycare admission, okay? So this uh, word is pretty common in Japan and indeed uh, this is uh, being practiced uh, and allowed by the uh, central government, okay? So that, that just solves the entire problem. Uh, unfortunately not, why? Well, the thing is that this Ekkyo practice is in, in principle allowed but uh, practice very rarely in reality, okay? Basically, the uh, uh, law, uh, which dates back about 75 years, uh, basically put the, uh, each city government in charge of uh, daycare allocation for its residents, and uh, only on top of that, there's an option uh, for the city governments to uh, engage, to, to make an agreement between the cities uh, to make this uh, uh, equal practice, okay? So, uh, this has been kind of like uh, the setting and then uh, it's been pretty rare. Um, so it's hard to pin down exactly why this is so rare, but the uh, suggestive evidence suggests that, well, um, basically uh, there seems to be very little, uh, little incentives for city government to actually practice this. Uh, why? Well, uh, first of all, the, uh, from each city's point of view, or maybe the mayor's point of view, you know, uh, these kids uh, or parents of the kids outside of the, uh, 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 the city, they don't vote for you, right? So uh, that means, well, even if you, you admit kids from the other cities, then uh, that doesn't really help you politically, okay? And on, at the same time, the, uh, providing childcare is very costly. So for example, uh, some estimates said that, well, monthly it costs to take care of one zero-year-old kid is something like 3,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, like I said, uh, the daycare, uh, public daycare is basically free, or, well, depending on the, your income, it can be something like 200 to 300, so it's, it's pretty low, okay. So, uh, it, and of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, associated uh, administrative costs and so on. So, it appears that the, from, from uh, uh, basically, the, uh, there's, so, the participation constraint, participation constraint, so to speak, is not satisfied uh, in this practice, okay, from the viewpoint of the local government, all right? So the question is, uh, what to do about it? Well, one possible solution, you might say, well, why don't you just abolish this entire law or, or legal structure and uh, set up a matching mechanism uh, that runs the allocation in the entire Tokyo prefecture? Uh, or maybe even the national, uh, do it in the national level, okay? So that sounds like a kind of fast, uh, best uh, solution. However, for a bunch of institutional reasons, uh, this solution seems to be I I impossible, uh, at least in the uh, foreseeable, foreseeable new future, okay? Uh, okay, and uh, now, uh, given that, so I will take this as a constraint, but think, now think of how to possibly uh, sort of set up a, a matching mechanism uh, that uh, helps uh, alleviate this political concern, participation concern, and improve the matching. So that's going to be the goal for me today. And uh, I will develop the theory uh, thinking about this question. Okay, so our approach, so basically we use a uh, uh, standard matching, uh, matching uh, setting, uh, a la Gail Shapley, Ross Sotomayor, and uh, Abdul Kadir Sommes, so school matching setting. But then um, uh, on top of that, I will, uh, uh, I will introduce uh, one uh, property or constraint, uh, which I call balancedness, okay? So that balancedness is a condition I impose on the matching, uh, sort of feasibility constraints, okay? And let me explain. So look at the picture over there. Uh, there are two cities, uh, blue and red, okay? And I uh, is a, uh, denotes a kid and S denotes a, a school or daycare, okay? 
and uh, look at the arrow uh, coming from uh, uh, kid uh, two to kid uh, two to school one. Okay, the red kid goes to blue uh, uh, blue school. Okay, so from the viewpoint of the blue city, that's an inflow of uh, non-residents. Okay, so that could be costly for the city uh, blue city. Okay, I require that uh, the, uh, that inflow should be compensated by uh, the uh, city uh, blue city to send its residents somewhere else. Okay which is the outflow, okay? And I require that uh, as a solution concept or a constraint or, or on the matching that for each city, uh, the uh, inflow must be equal to outflow, okay? So that's going to be the, uh, that, that's going to be the uh, constraint I impose, okay? All right. Now, uh, the question, okay. So once we, th we take this uh, balancedness as a constraint on the, on the uh, feasible matching, then is it going to be compatible with other goals that we'd like to have, okay? Uh, what are the goals? Well, uh, let me take the uh, standard solution in the matching, uh, school matching setting, which is the stability, okay? In this context, stability means, well, uh, individually rational and there's no blocking pair. And uh, we can actually divide it up, uh, uh, divide this stability into three basic axioms in this context, which we, uh, which we consider to be uh, normatively appealing. One is uh, IR. The second is uh, uh, what we call fairness, uh, which means the following. So uh, if you take uh, student I, uh, kid I, and kid J, then uh, the, uh, uh, there's no situation such that uh, I would rather uh, be admitted to a daycare that the J is in, and from the point of view of the daycare, the I has a higher priority to be admitted than, rather than J, okay? In such a case, I would uh, uh, envy J and uh, uh, complain, and the complaint is valid, okay? So that is a fairness. And uh, the other one is non-wastefulness, meaning that, well, there's no uh, daycare with a vacant position uh, such that some, uh, some kid would like to go to that daycare but uh, denied uh, admission, okay? So that's, uh, that's the three uh, axioms. Okay, so uh, again, so the first question is, uh, are these three basic uh, normative axioms uh, compatible with the uh, 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 balancedness condition? And secondly, well, uh, to the extent it's possible to satisfy these desirable properties, uh, is there a way to find it in uh, sort of computable way, i.e., uh, is there a, a, a polynomial time algorithm to find it? And here's the result. The first one is a, a, a sort of observation. Uh, it turns out that, indeed, the, a, a, once we have this balancedness as a constraint, the a stable matching is not guaranteed to exist, okay? Uh, actually, we have a characterization basically saying that, well, uh, it's, it's very rare to uh, guarantee the stable matching uh, in this context. And uh, uh, indeed, actually, the result is even, uh, even, uh, even more negative. So the, 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 just the non-wastefulness uh, cons uh, constraint is incompatible with uh, balancedness. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's going to the tension. Then, uh, given that, uh, I will introduce, well, I, I will uh, need to sort of weaken some, uh, well, give up some uh, uh, axioms, and uh, we drop the, uh, this uh, non-wastefulness axiom, okay? Uh, like I said, non-wastefulness uh, axiom uh, has been shown to be, uh, to jeopardize with the balancedness constraints, okay, so we drop it. Fortunately, once we drop this non-wastefulness as an axiom, then the remaining two uh, axioms, uh, IR uh, and fairness, are indeed compatible with the e e balancedness condition, okay? So we have some weakened version of the uh, solution. Uh, however, it turns out that this, well, uh, this, these three conditions are a little too, too, too weak. Okay, uh, instead of saying uh, balance, uh, IR balanced uh, fair all the time, let me call it uh, IBF, okay? So uh, I, uh, this is IBF, IR, balanced and fair. Okay, so IBF existence is always guaranteed, but however, uh, well, as you can see, uh, IBF, none of I or B or F talks at all about efficiency, and indeed, uh, this matching could be very inefficient as it turns out, okay? So uh, then, uh, uh, given that, I will uh, uh, aim for uh, finding a Pareto, uh, Pareto frontier of the IBFs, okay? 
So I call it uh, efficient IBF. So uh, efficient IBF means uh, it should be an IBF and there is no uh, matching that is Pareto superior for the students and still IBF, okay? Now, um, result two. So this is the main result. Uh, so the question is how to judge uh, given uh, whether the given matching is an efficient IBF or not. Okay, so that's a question. And uh, we give a characterization of uh, uh, efficient IBF using certain graphs, okay? Uh, given the matching, uh, we define a graph, which I call the fig, the fair implement graph, and uh, check, that, check whether that graph has a cycle. And it turns out that we can, uh, we can show that uh, uh, a given IBF is an efficient IBF if and only if uh, it, is, uh, it does not have any cycle. And uh, the cycle, I, which I will explain later, has a sort of property that if there's a cycle, uh, they, well, with, uh, sorry, I, I should have said that uh, this graph, uh, uh, nodes in this graph is schools and, uh, schools and kids. And uh, when there's a cycle, uh, you can actually let the uh, kids trade uh, their, their seats to improve, okay? So that's, uh, that's the nature of the, uh, 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 the way I, I define the uh, uh, graph. So that means, that in, uh, suggests, and indeed it turns out to be the case that, well, um, this characterization uh, immediately gives a computable algorithm to find the uh, uh, efficient IBF, which is given the IBF, check whether the gra associated graph has a cycle. If there's no cycle, then we are done. If not, uh, we can let, uh, let uh, students uh, uh, exchange uh, exchange seats and uh, in such a way that everybody improves and still be a, the resulting matching is uh, IBF, then uh, we re repeat this procedure uh, over and over again until there's no remaining cycle. Then, then that's, that is a relatively computably fast uh, algorithm and it will always find a, a efficient IBF. Okay, so that's uh, basically the uh, result. Uh, 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 okay. So at this point, um, given the time constraints, let me not spend too much time uh, on the literature, but of course we are not exactly the first uh, to think about this balancedness condition. Okay, so uh, as far as I know, the e e e e Dua and Umba is the first paper to do this. So they consider the student exchange uh, among, uh, among the colleges. So the colleges needs to uh, balance the uh, inflow and outflow. Okay. So because of the difference in setting and the, and the desirable properties, uh, the, uh, the results are different, but the setting is kind of similar. And uh, my own work uh, with uh, Isa uh, Hafaria and Bumi Yemes also thought about the inter-district uh, school choice in the context of the US. Uh, there, the idea again is that the district would like to send uh, the same number of people or uh, kids uh, uh, as they, they accept uh, from other districts. So one of the things we found in that paper is that, well, to characterize the a, a choice rule, uh, i.e. the, uh, the uh, function which takes the a, a set of applicants and outputs who is admitted, and we characterize the choice rule such that uh, the uh, stability is guaranteed to be a, a compatible with uh, balancedness, and it turns out that the, this uh, this if and only if condition is extremely stringent. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the results I just described today uh, can be thought of as what to do uh, about, about the, well, most cases in which uh, the usual gate shaped algorithm would not work well. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, I think I have, uh, okay, I think a good time, uh, okay, good. So let me, let me, instead of going into the full uh, formality, let me mostly use examples to show the idea, okay? So here's an example, uh, a simple uh, two, two cities, uh, blue and red, and uh, student, student preferences are given here, and the school priorities are here, okay? And uh, broken, uh, broken circles represent uh, seats in schools, okay? So suppose that in this market, this echo practice is not uh, allowed, i.e. the uh, residents should go to the, uh, their neighborhood school or their school in their, uh, their cities, okay. In, in that domain, so the, uh, following the uh, sort of recommendation in the literature, imagine that we do the quote unquote best solution, which is run the deferred acceptance algorithm, but only city by city separately, okay. 
So in this case, for example, in the blue city, well, I hope you can see the different colors here. Um, so the one and two are uh, resident in blue city. Uh, their first choices are school two, which is in the red city. However, they cannot apply to them. So they, they can just apply to uh, school one, which is in the blue city. Uh, the, the resident in the red city uh, actually likes uh, blue, blue school, but then uh, he can apply only to the uh, red city. So the outcome will be something like this, okay? So uh, one of the uh, blue, uh, blue students go to the blue school and uh, 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 the unique uh, red, uh, red residents go to the uh, red, uh, red school. Okay, so uh, however, this is not actually e e IBF. Uh, sorry, this, this one is IBF, but this is not efficient IBF. There's another IBF, uh, IR, uh, balanced and fair, uh, of this form, okay. So here, uh, compared to the outcome of the DA deferred acceptance separately, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the unmatched student in, in Blue City uh, actually is now admitted to uh, uh, Red School, and uh, Red residents uh, go to the, uh, uh, his more preferred school, which is a Blue, blue School. And note that uh, actually this exchange not only uh, improves uh, kids' uh, preference uh, utility, welfare, uh, but also actually they can even increase the uh, total number of pe people being matched. Okay, reduce this uh, like how uh, much uh, uh, people are matched. Okay, so uh, we can also check that this. One, oh, another thing to note is that well, this is indeed balanced because well, uh, one of the uh, blue kids was sent to the red city. And there's uh, one, uh, one, one um, red kid is sent to the blue city. So inflow uh, equals outflow for both regions, okay, for both cities. Okay, all right. So hopefully this has convinced you that, well, there may be, possibly there may be some uh, efficiency gain from uh, at least uh, uh, even under the constraint of this uh, inflow equals outflow, there may be some benefit from doing this. Okay. So let me actually, well, um, I prepared some slides uh, with formality, but I think uh, all the idea has been already talked about. So let me just remind you that uh, the basic axioms we'd like to uh, impose is IL, non-wastefulness, and fairness, okay? Together with this balancedness condition, okay? So preliminary facts. So like I already said, uh, I have actually explained, Fact one is that, well, uh, IR, fairness, and non wastefulness are uh, 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 jointly uh, comp uh, equal to stability. But fact two is that, well, these conditions are, well, uh, incompatible with the uh, balancedness requirement. Okay, so here is an illustrative example, perhaps overly simplified. Okay, so there are again two cities, blue and red. There's only one student, however. Okay. So what is her preference? Well, she, her best choice is a, a red school, okay? Then, well, the only non-stable matching, indeed, only non wasteful matching, should be a matching in which this blue student goes to the red school, but of course this matching is not balanced, okay? So I have just shown you that uh, these axioms are incompatible with each other, okay? Well, of course, this is an overly simplified example, uh, but uh, this uh, should make a point. Okay, so what to do about it? Okay, like I already told you, so I drop this non-wastefulness axiom, okay? Uh, now that you think about it, uh, like in the previous example, you know, the, uh, insisting on not having any, any waste seems to be actually overly demanding condition, because, simply because that sometimes you cannot move uh, people from a city A to city B, okay? But we would like to insist on all other uh, requirements, uh, namely A, I, B, and F, okay. And uh, let me mention again that I, B, F always exists, but somewhat stupid reason actually. For example, what is an example of I, B, F? Well, uh, empty matching, okay. So I, uh, empty matching is I, B, F because I, in the rational because everybody is in the outside option. B, balanced because nobody is sent anywhere, so inflow is, is uh, uh, zero and outflow is zero. Finally, F, fairness. Why? Well, everybody is in the outside option. They are getting, everybody is getting the same thing. Nobody envies anybody else. Okay, that sounds a little bit stupid, okay? So that means we should aim for looking at efficient uh, uh, IBF. Okay. 
So uh, as I promised, I will give a characterization of the uh, efficient IVF. Toward that, I will construct a bipartite uh, directed graph, uh, okay, in the following way. Okay, think of a graph where the, all the vertices represent students and uh, schools, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm using students and schools uh, or kids and uh, daycares, they are the same thing, okay. So the kids on one side and the daycares on the other side, okay. And I would like to construct a, a, a direct graph where the arrow, so the, uh, roughly speaking, arrow of a student to a school represents uh, where the student would like to move to, okay, roughly speaking, and uh, uh, arrow from a school to, uh, to, a, to a student uh, represents the, uh, the fact that the, this student can use uh, the school seat to, uh, to sort of exchange the school seat uh, with someone else. Then that sounds like uh, then the cycle might actually help you to uh, uh, identify how to imp parrot improve. Okay? Of course, I need to be a bit more careful about the pointing rule of the arrows okay, uh, to, to substantiate what I just said. Okay, so let's, let's go uh, with a, st a student okay, first. Okay. The student pointing rule is uh, like what I, pretty much what I, what I said with just one twist, which is, uh, I, uh, for any school S, uh, a student points to that school if and only if the following is true. First, oh, oh, okay, so this matching is all based on given the matching, okay? So the first condition is that the student must like that school S better, strictly better than what she is matched to currently, okay? But that's not the only condition. The other one is that this student must also have the highest priority at school S among everybody who would like to actually be moved to that school. Okay, why do I need this uh, requirement? Well, um, suppose that there are two students, let's say, who like to go to school S, okay, one and two. One has a higher priority than two. If I accidentally let student two to move to S while uh, keeping a student one unmoved, then that means one now has a, uh, a MB to student two, and that is a violation of fairness. Okay, because one has a higher priority. Okay, so uh, that uh, so this limit uh, makes it kind of like guarantee later that the uh, uh, running the, uh, this uh, uh, allowing the trade along the cycle does not uh, create a new fairness violation. Okay, the uh, more complicated is uh, the way that the st schools point to a student. Okay, so like I said before. Uh, uh, this is meant. This arrow from a school to a student is meant to represent the possibility for the student to use the school seat uh, for trade. So that suggests that. Well, if the uh, suggests the following, right? So it sounds pretty simple. So uh, the school should point to a student uh, if uh, the student is currently at that school. Okay. Indeed, that is one of the cases in which the school, uh, school points to a student S, uh, st uh, point to a student, okay? But that's not the only case, actually, we need to care about. Why? Well, as we have already seen in the example before, sometimes uh, the uh, unmatched student must be able to move to another city, okay? Uh, because that can sort of like weaken the uh, balancedness condition, op open up the possibility for uh, someone else to move as well, okay? So that means, that, uh, which is to say that, well, sometimes this student must be using a vacant seat, which is currently occupied by nobody, okay? So that is a case two, uh, sorry, case, yeah, case two, um, where the uh, school is going to point to a student. Okay, let me actually be a bit more careful here. So the, the second case in which a school is, uh, 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 points to a student is, uh, firstly, this school must have a vacant position. And secondly, one of the cases A or B must be true. A is a case in which this student is a resident in the city, the same city as this school, uh, school is, and also unmatched, okay? Which was the case uh, in the example before. The second case is whether or not the student is a, a resident or not, uh, she must be currently matched with a school in that city, okay? The same city as the school or school S, okay? 
in both cases, uh, we need to basically account for the fact that uh, the vacant, uh, vacant uh, seat uh, in the school could be kind of used for trade. Okay, so let me give an example. Okay, so this is a previous example with two cities. And uh, this, uh, this matching here is the outcome of running the different acceptance region uh, city by city. Okay, so now uh, let me construct a, a graph. Okay. Uh, firstly, let's, uh, let's talk about the student point in a school. Okay. Uh, take school one, okay, blue school. So who is going to point to it? Well. The, uh, given the current matching, the only person who like uh, blue school better than what he has uh, is I3, okay? So uh, I put the arrow like this. Okay, how about school two in the red city? Okay, um, there are two people indeed, uh, I1 and I2, both in blue city, who would like to point to uh, uh, red school here. Uh, but uh, among them, uh, only one person can point to it, namely, uh, 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 student one. Why? Well, that's because according to school two's priority, uh, 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 student one has a higher priority. If we were to move uh, student two to school, uh, school three, that can cause a, a violation of the fairness constraints. Okay. Then, now let's look at who will point, uh, the, the, how the schools will point to a student. Well, the easier one is uh, school two, okay? School two's uh, position is uh, occupied by uh, uh, student I3, so uh, I will point, uh, uh, let school two to point to uh, I3. How about uh, school one? School one, uh, firstly, well, I2 uh, now, uh, I2 is matched to school one, so it, uh, she will be pointed at, certainly. But note again that uh, school S1 also has a vacant position, so this should be pointed, out, pointed to as well. Uh, in this case, like I said, uh, unmatched residents should be also pointed to. So this is the uh, fair improvement graph associated with the current matching, okay? Okay, now the cycle, okay? So uh, in this graph, well, what is a cycle? Well, this is a unique cycle, okay? Uh, there could be multiple cycle or there could be no cycle. In this case, there is exactly one cycle. And as you can see, if you run this, uh, if you let the trade along this cycle, indeed, the resulting matching is the efficient IVF I showed before, okay? And it turns out that that is actually a fully general uh, statement, uh, which is, generally speaking, the uh, given IVF is uh, efficient IVF if and only if uh, there's no fig cycle on it, okay? Um, okay, so I think I have already talked for 43 minutes, so let me be quick. Uh, about the proofs, okay. I, uh, hopefully I already gave you enough of the intuition, so let me be quick here. So uh, like I said, this uh, graph is basically constructed in such a way that the proof is kind of obvious now. Uh, okay, if we start with uh, IBF, uh, it is individual rational, why? Well, uh, we started out with uh, individual rational matching and everybody have improved uh, after running this cycle. So it continues to be individual rational. Uh, uh, Pareto superior, uh, this new matching is Pareto superior, of course, because it, uh, uh, that's the way I, I, I allow the student to uh, point to a school. And uh, also the uh, fairness is also kind of uh, uh, already obvious given the construction because, well, like I said, only the highest priority person is allowed to point to a school and hence move. The balancedness is a little bit more complicated because you know when you just move some people around, why does it not actually jeopardize with the change the outflow or inflow? Indeed, sometimes the inflow and outflow are changed. However, uh, this picture uh, convinces you that hopefully convinces you that uh, uh, indeed it's going to be fine. So there are two points. One is that uh, the construction of the graph uh, uh, guarantees that whenever a arrow goes out of the region, then that will also have the same number of arrow coming into the, uh, that region. So that is a, a first point. And secondly, the arrow is always uh, from a student to a school. So that means whenever we, we run the algorithm, one, uh, then attached to a, a, a arrow from a region to another region, there's one student moving, okay? 
And then, depending on whether this uh, outgoing student or in incoming students are residents or not, we have four cases. But in each case, uh, change in the outflow is uh, uh, exactly cancelled out by the change in the inflow. Okay? So that part is relatively easy, I think. The opposite is uh, the opposite uh, direction of the uh, theorem is if the matching is not efficient yet, then there should be some cycle. Okay, so that part is constructive. So the uh, simplest, simplistic way that you might think would work would be suppose that matching current matching mu is inefficient IBF, then there's Pareto superior IBF mu prime. Why don't you just write uh, everybody points to a, a, a better matching at mu prime and there's a cycle? Actually, it doesn't work that way. Why? Well, because uh, if we just let people to point to the a, a final destination in the uh, Pareto sphere matching, then that cycle might not actually keep this property that it's a fair improvement graph. So, uh, namely, someone else might actually uh, a, a, a have a higher priority than. Uh, than uh, someone who is pointing to, the, uh, uh, pointing to the final destination. So for that reason, we need to be a bit careful to construct the graph, but well, uh, you, you can do it. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, that again suggests that well, we can uh, use a, uh, uh, this graph to uh, run the cycle. And uh, I don't think I should actually convince you that this graph, uh, this graph construction works for or running the uh, uh, cycle algorithm. Okay. So let me show you how well, uh, and uh, in case that, well, although I have not convinced, well, uh, explained how, uh, how this is uh, polynomial time, um, instead let me show you some simulation. Okay. So, um, so we, we have this theory. So we wanted to know how much difference actually this makes. So we are doing some estimation of preferences. Uh, so we got data from one of the cities in this uh, uh, Tokyo 23 cities and estimate the preferences. And, uh, uh, and then uh, given the uh, estimated preferences, we are doing the counterfactual uh, between like running the DA, uh, DA uh, uh, default acceptance city by city, which is close to what, we, uh, what is currently the uh, case and uh, our solution, and then the full centralization. Okay, we know that full centralization uh, is the best one. Uh, the question is how much we can, uh, we can go with a partial in, uh, integration like uh, the one I, uh, uh, I have been talking about. And so far, the preliminary BD number suggests that, well, compared to the uh, improvement, so the, reduction, the num number of kids who, uh, who stay unmatched uh, will be reduced by about 14%. Uh, by adopting our method compared to the full centralization. Okay, so that's not, that not uh, well, uh, that, that doesn't really go or, or nearly as much as the centralization, uh, it goes somewhere, okay? All right, so I guess I still have maybe two, uh, okay, some time, good. So, okay, so this is the uh, still ongoing work, so I should, uh, uh, I should have a bit more of the uh, work with different specifications. Anyway, so hopefully I can, uh, I can report it to you uh, uh, sometime later. Okay, another thing I want to mention is that, well, uh, as a matching mechanism using human subjects, uh, we worry about strategic misreporting, right? Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that this algorithm, fig cycle algorithm, is not strategy proof. Uh, intuition, well, the, uh, we could have multiple uh, fig cycle, uh, efficient, uh, efficient IBF matching, and uh, different cycle selection rule can lead to different ones, okay? Uh, this is kind of symmetric uh, between two people. So one, one matching may be better for uh, one person and the other matching could be better for another. And uh, uh, sometimes people, uh, someone can uh, misreport preferences in such a way to kill one of the uh, cycle uh, from being a fair improvement graph, okay? And indeed that can uh, actually make uh, people better off. This is unfortunate. Uh, let me advertise, however, that this is just not a drawback of my algorithm. And indeed, uh, the, uh, it turns out that generally it's impossible uh, in the sense that there's no mechanism that is guaranteed to find the uh, efficient IBF and the search proof. So unfortunately, this is uh, inherent in this problem. Okay. All right. 
So I think I still have five minutes, that, that's great. So I have uh, with a bit more uh, uh, topics such as the combative statics and uh, generalize the results for the case in which priority of schools over students are weak. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, the, like I told you before, there's a characterization of cases in which a stable matching uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, balancedness are compatible. That's exactly the case in which actually running the deferred acceptance uh, 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 algorithm will find a balanced matching. So, and uh, that is also the case in which our FIG algorithm uh, finds that matching, actually. So basically, our FIG cycle algorithm uh, coincides with the deferred acceptance algorithm whenever uh, uh, balancedness condition uh, is uh, compatible with stability. Okay, so uh, back to the sort of uh, high-level takeaway, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, the, the point I want to make, well, apart from all the details, is that, well, fragmentation seems to be a relatively, uh, well, possibly important issue in matching markets, okay. And uh, sometimes it's hard to abolish that feature of fragmentation, but oftentimes by you know, uh, taking care of some participation constraints of the designers in these markets, uh, one could actually help by making certain uh, change in the algorithm, okay, in a somewhat limited manner, okay? So that's, that, that, was, uh, that is a sort of like thesis I want to uh, push today. And uh, more generally speaking, uh, I think that it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to look at the detail of the market. Ah, so for those, those of you who are in uh, Mike Ossowski's talk in the morning, he also made this point that the details could matter. And uh, the specific detail that uh, matters in my context is that, well, there could be a lot of like some kind of non-standard constraints in the given matching market and taking care of them could be quite uh, important, okay? Uh, so this balancedness uh, is uh, one such uh, example of such constraints. There are many other constraints that might be of interest. So uh, coming from my uh, earlier paper in 2015, for example, the, uh, we looked at the Japanese medical match, and uh, there, in that market, the uh, medical match uses a centralized matching algorithm, just like a deferred acceptance. However, uh, the, there's a con uh, constraint uh, saying that, well, in each region of the country, there's a common upper bound on the number of uh, doctors who can be placed in that region, okay? Uh, okay, so that's an additional non-standard constraint. And in order to, uh, so the current practice to basically operationalize that constraint is, in, in Japan, in many other examples that I, uh, we, we found, basically uh, set in advance and in a rigid manner, uh, the uh, constraint uh, that uh, reduce the capacity uh, of each hospital, okay? Basically, uh, basically sort of cram that problem with constraint into the standard problem, okay? But then that is associated with e efficiency cost because you kind of set this uh, reduced capacity, artificial capacity in advance, and it's not responsive to actual demand. So uh, based on that, uh, that observation, uh, Yuichiro and I uh, found that, well, you can, you can actually improve upon it by basically making this allocation of limited s common seats uh, 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 to depend on the express preferences, okay? And um, so when we wrote this paper first, uh, we couldn't access the data in the uh, actual medical match because they were so, so worried about the uh, privacy concern. Uh, we did uh, simulation based on the synthetic data. So just a few weeks ago, uh, we finally got uh, access to the data. So here's a report. So uh, if we look at the uh, current Japanese deferred acceptance uh, and uh, compare it with uh, our uh, solution uh, in the 2022 data, uh, we get uh, about 20 fewer uh, medical doctors unmatched. So, uh, uh, so that is, uh, that is a, another example in which the design could help, hopefully. And uh, the, the, in case you are not totally interested in the Japanese medical match, uh, the, the same kind of constraints appears in other cases as well. So let me try to convince you, okay? Uh, so here's, uh, here's uh, uh, Sysmex, so that's a company for which I, we, we helped introduce the algorithm to match employees to its divisions in the company, okay? And they, turns out to have a common, a common upper bound constraint on groups of divisions. So for example, the entire sales department, okay? 
uh, which has a bunch of divisions, okay? So this is actually mathematically isomorphic to uh, this medical match in Japan, right? So uh, then, so uh, basically uh, for that reason, so we, we, we implemented this flexibility path acceptance algorithm in 2021, and we are using it uh, until today. So here's what we found in their, uh, their allocation. So if, so this is a distribution of the ranks. This, uh, so uh, x-axis measures uh, the ranks, and y-axis measures the cumulative distribution of, of, of the employees matched to case or better matches. And then uh, blue ones are, are, are our, our solution, which is used now, and uh, red one is what would have happened if they, they, they use the off-the-shelf uh, uh, algorithm, like the one implemented in the Japanese medical match. So um, in this company, there are not many people unmatched because they, oh, everyone needs to uh, work there, but the uh, rank distribution seems to show some differences, okay? All right, and uh, similar things can be observed in the data, data as well. So uh, in the data, there are some, uh, some leeway to move around the teachers and space across different age groups. And uh, that has not been utilized much in the current practice. But uh, if we do it, uh, then uh, we get some people, uh, 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 people uh, additionally matched without putting more uh, resources in the uh, system. Okay. On that note, so let me summarize. Uh, and OK, thank you very much. Basically, well, ah, I think I already said everything written in this slide. So, well, uh, that's it. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, I have been enjoying this conference a lot. And I hope you do uh, as well. Thank you very much. OK. Um, we have time for a question, but uh, before we do, hold tight after the questions are over because there's a reception immediately after and there will be an announcement about the logistics of getting to the reception. Does anyone have a question? I have a question. Um, so the, the non-existence comes from the fact that if there's an empty seat in a local school but no local student who's unmatched to fill that seat, then the only way to ensure non-wastefulness would be to have the inflow to that region exceed the outflow from that region, right? That's right. So, so instead you, you abandon non-wastefulness and you look for efficient uh, matchings that satisfy the other conditions. So I, I was wondering, what if you weakened non-wastefulness to just um, avoid the kind of issue that your counterexample illustrates. And in particular, we, we tolerate waste in a region that is an empty seat in a region. Mm -hmm. If there's no local student who's unmatched in that region, mm -hmm. but if there is a local student who's unmatched in that region, then he must be matched to okay. an empty seat if I one see, exists. I see. And so my question would be, if we looked at that concept, how would it relate to your efficient okay. um, yeah. IBFs? Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks for the question. So uh, the short answer is, uh, okay, so if we uh, return this no wastefulness in, in the way that you just described, actually, I think that will actually uh, require that matching to be the stable, uh, to be stable in the usual sense. And hence, this means that, well, you will recover the full efficiency, I mean, uh, subject to stability constraints. And that basically means that, uh, well, uh, but on the other hand, so that really means that uh, balancedness, there's no way to uh, satisfy balancedness uh, because, uh, because of this incompatibility. And one thing we know is, indeed, that solution of yours is going to be parallel superior to uh, everything we have seen so far, uh, including the, uh, doing the uh, default acceptance separately by region by region, but also, I, although I haven't explained it to you yet, uh, also, this full centralization is actually spirit superior uh, for all students uh, to our solution as well. So that is definitely better if you can do it. Another question that I, I have been thinking a bit is uh, what uh, a version of what you're saying maybe, uh, let's not require the exact balanceness between inflow and outflow, but let's have some bands, uh, like uh, some number. So. Uh, they, we have not uh, uh, figured out uh, all the details, so it appears that likely that 
uh, even if you have some constant uh, uh, band on the uh, tolerable inflow and outflow for each region, then the, our solution seems to be ge to generalize. But we have not done that yet. So it looks like the uh, balancedness is, uh, I, I think that motivation for balancedness is that this is something that maybe your cities are willing to do in terms of, you know, right? It's like a prisoner right. swaps, you, you, you know. Yes. <laughs> this is the kind of water make, you know, exchange acceptable. Have you actually talked to them about, you know, um, uh, whether they, they are, uh, you know, open to the idea about exchanging subject to the constraint that there is a balancedness? And this is one question. My second question is related to uh, Jeff's. Um, so in your case, you are sacrificing uh, non-wastefulness, right? But then you require fairness. So one could imagine doing the output the other way around, yep. right? You, you may be, you know, mm -hmm. seems like, I yeah. mean, I hate wastefulness, so, <laughs> yep. so, and, but, but in, in the context, in the, let's say, context of a daycare, it's not clear what, I mean, is it, is our priorities that important? Uh, so it's yeah, not quite clear whether you, yeah. you are going, yeah, so that's. That, that's a very fair question. So let me answer the second question first, okay. So uh, my instinct also is, uh, why don't we just abandon fairness and uh, uh, insist on no wastefulness? Okay, that, because that's, that seems really uh, inefficient. Uh, in this context, uh, there are two reasons that maybe I should actually prioritize fairness over no wastefulness, however. One is that, well, indeed, uh, in the context like the daycare, uh, this ranking is really important, actually, so basically, uh, Parents, uh, parents actually do a lot of things. So the ranking in this context, for example, is decided by whether uh, whether your uh, the grandparents are living next to uh, next to your house or not. For example, parents uh, there are some anecdotal reports saying that uh, parents try to hide the existence of their grandparents just to get a higher priority. Basically, that shows that I really need a daycare seat. So that's one kind of weird answer. The other, a little bit more serious answer is that in this context, actually. Um, it turns out, like I just uh, quickly mentioned, even if we do not require uh, fairness or, or IR for the mother, actually the non wastefulness alone is incompatible with balancedness. So for that, like in this example that I showed you, the, uh, whenever there's a, a, a vacant position, then that person would like to move. move and uh, that, yeah, for that reason, there's no, n there was no choice in this particular context. So that was the uh, answer to your question. Coming to the first question, right? So first question was, okay, have I talked to some uh, municipal government? And we just began to do it. So we have, yeah, uh, okay, so let me, um, so I should have actually acknowledged the uh, uh, cooperation. So this is a picture of the, uh, uh, picture of our implementation in the daycare. And the one in the left, uh, uh, left, this picture is a company called Cyber Agent. So this is a, uh, uh, like a uh, uh, tech company uh, in Japan, they have this branch of like government uh, vending, and uh, uh, we we teamed up with that company, uh, and they were uh, they began to talk with the municipal governments and see if uh, we can implement it or not. So no luck yet, uh, but uh, I'm being a bit hopeful. So did I misunderstand uh, that you restrict the balancedness to be between pairs only? Oh, sorry, I should have said that. Uh, uh, actually, our condition is uh, for each, uh, not, not pairwise actually, yeah. So for each vision, you could allow for, let's say, three-way exchange uh, as long as uh, there's a balance overall. Again, uh, Fujito. Thank you.